I want to thank Father Lenane and uh, Dean Solomon, especially for calling me forward to receive this honor on behalf of the leadership of Mercy Health Services. To be recognized as business leader is, puts us in illustrious company. I mean, who wouldn't be proud to be in the company of those who have been named over the past 30 years, and especially those four that I was just photographed with? I keep a magnet on the door of my refrigerator, and it uh, confronts me with this instruction every morning. Do one thing today that scares you. Well, standing here alone, <laughs> after all the wonderful things that have been said about mercy, uh, I'm representing, I, I think you can appreciate the fact that I truly am representing an awesome, awesome leadership team. And they're all down here in the front. And I uh, am just so proud of being here representing all of you. And I must express first and foremost the collective pride that all of us in Mercy's leadership feel for what has been accomplished in the name of Mercy and in the spirit of the Sisters of Mercy particularly in recent years. At our flagship medical center here in downtown, at Stella Maris in Baltimore County, and at the locations throughout the region where Mercy's presence is substantial and growing, our physicians, our nurses, our staff of all kinds, our volunteers, they're the ones who literally make Mercy. They are the front line they do the deeds of mercy. The men and women who serve our neighbors with compassion and respect day after day and night after night are the ultimate source of pride for us who are accepting this award tonight. Truly, the occasion celebrates the association of two venerable Baltimore institutions. Loyola University, Maryland, and Mercy Health. Tom Mullen, our president and CEO, is our business leader par excellence. And as, as you already heard, he is a Selinger School alumnus. Not only that, John Topper, our Executive Vice President, Justin Dibel, our Chief Financial Officer, and Lisa Connick, our Vice President for Business Health, also earned MBAs as Selinger Scholars. So, mercy, thanks Loyola, not only for the fine academic preparation of these accomplished leaders, but for sharpening their personal instincts for professionalism and commitment both within and beyond their primary roles. I feel really confident that I speak for this entire audience in saying that having this caliber of education available to the future leaders of Baltimore's business and civic institutions is a deeply appreciated asset of our community. Important as it is, <laughs> important as it is, the education of several Mercy executives and managers does not represent the full extent of our relationship with Loyola University. Something I care about a great deal is the involvement of 20 Loyola undergrads in one of Mercy's outreach efforts. Our goal is to achieve better birth outcomes through health education for low-income pregnant women. Loyola's partnership in that work testifies to our shared interest in acting beyond the boundaries of our individual agendas as we try to address critical needs within our region. Now, as for my personal association with Loyola, well, that goes back a really, really long way. In fact, I had the privilege 
of knowing the remarkable leader for whom the Selinger School of Business and Management is named. When Father Joseph Selinger was presiding over Loyola College, I even worked for him for a couple of years. I was a very junior nun at the time, and I was assigned to move, along with the whole registrar's office, lock, stock, and filing cabinet, if you will, when the all-women's college, Mount St. Agnes, joined with Loyola, and Loyola welcomed women as undergraduates for the first time. Sometime during that first year, Father Selinger took a group of us Mount St. Agnes transplants to lunch. And as I recall it, he wanted us to help him get a sense of, of the culture of the place that we had left. And I think he wanted, he was searching for a way to blend the spirit of a mercy institution with the spirit of a Jesuit institution. Now, I know we talked about the first Sister of Mercy. You already heard her name tonight, Catherine McCauley. We emphasized that she focused on serving the whole community, that she was always especially careful to include the poor. Beyond that theme, I don't remember many of the particulars of the conversation after all these years. But I do remember Father Selinger's gesture of respect. And I like to think that in some way it still bears influence as Loyola inspires students to learn to lead and to serve, to be men and women for others in a diverse and changing world. Leading and serving, leading by serving, the relationship of leadership and service has been a theme for Mercy Health Services. We've worked really hard at keeping success in business and fidelity to mission tightly integrated and mutually reinforcing. We think of our work as building and sustaining Mercy as a credible institution serving the common good. We accept responsibility to be a leader in business in this time of tremendous turbulence in healthcare. And we count on fidelity to mission and values as an indispensable enabler of our business success. You might be somewhat surprised to know that between 1850 and 1950, 20% of all the hospitals and ancillary health services in America were developed by Catholic sisters. If you were to combine all these facilities and organizations into one, they would be the world's largest healthcare enterprise and five times larger than any existing health system. It's worth asking, and I have asked myself, was the success achieved by those early sisters produced by simply expecting that the Lord will provide? I don't think so. <laughs> In fact, we Sisters of Mercy often quote an instruction of Catherine McCauley who said, very little good can be accomplished or evil avoided without the use of money. <laughs> Several years ago, Tom Friedman in his New York Times column discussed what he termed sustainable values. Now, I have quoted and cited this column so many times I beginning to think I owe Tom Friedman a royalty. But in any event, in the column, he contrasted sustainable values with situational values. A banker who writes a mortgage for someone that he or she knows won't be able to make the payments over time would be acting on situational values, as if to say, I'll be gone when the bill comes due. People inspired by sustainable values act just the opposite, as if to say, 
I will always be here. I must behave, therefore, in ways that sustain my employees, my customers, my suppliers, my environment, my country, and my future generations. In 1874, six Sisters of Mercy arrived at a shabby dispensary being operated by a group of physicians on the corner of Calvert and Saratoga Streets, just a few blocks from here. To those sisters, the current leadership of Mercy Health, Loyola's business leader of 2014, would have been their future generation. And the values bequeathed them by the sisters support determination to conduct Mercy as both a ministry and a business, not sacrificing one for the other, and not even keeping both in some kind of mysterious balance, but doing both things very, very well. Commitment to good business practices is critical to sustaining us as a business. Yet the whole point of being sustained is fulfilling our mission expressing by our actions that God's healing love embraces all. I thank all of you in this audience tonight for the privilege of addressing you on behalf of Mercy's leadership. So many of you are Baltimore civic and business leaders, and others among you, particularly the students, are preparing yourselves to take on the mantle of leadership. I thank all of you for what you do to advance our community and to open the opportunities for success to all our neighbors. Finally, I am immensely grateful to Mercy's own fabulous Board of Trustees, without whose vision, wise governance, and courage, Mercy would not be in a position to receive this award. God bless you, one and all. Keep you in good health. Thank you. Bye -bye.